the people finder, it, it, it sucked. I'm going to be honest. It sucked. And then uh, the way it worked, like it never really worked right. And it seems like you're doing it and it's working pretty good. Well, and that's and what happens to me. It's hard to make things that are free. And so, I, you know, a lot of props to them for doing that. But that's it's hard. I mean, sometimes you get what you pay for. Mr. 4 2 welcome back to my channel. Today I am not going to react on another video. I'm going to destroy the Flat Earth Friend Finder. reading of every user's location. This doesn't look good for privacy, but it doesn't end there. A little bit above, there's this URL. Let's have a look at that. This is the same raw data as on the website, just presented a little bit different. Mind you, the data as presented this way can be used freely by anyone on the internet to do funny stuff with, like automated tracking, find a person's traveling habits, and so on. I think the implications of this are clear. So I'll let this guy take it away and I'll come back and make a follow up video, maybe a second follow up video. But the, the, the uh, hypocrisy of the whole thing is that there was an issue 2019 with the flatter, the original flatter people finder app. And uh, these guys threw a freaking hissy fit like you wouldn't believe. It demanded everybody to delete the app, remove it, it's not safe, so on and so forth. And now we have an issue, the, the chickens have come home to roost. We have an issue that's several times worse. So this Glober YouTuber basically exploited this unsecured uh, API endpoint, which returned um, a JSON data set in which the guy is showing that he has access to. The beginning. The Google Play page for the Flat Earth Sun, Moon and Zodiac Clock. There is an option to buy the app for 3 euros and 19 cents, but I'm obviously not going to do that. Instead, I will find the associated website for this app. In order to do that, I need to scroll all the way down to find this link. Visit website. And here we are. Immediately noticeable is the big map with the blue dots. According to David, every blue dot is a person who has the app installed and on the bottom right we can see there are supposed to be 37,073 of them. I will come back to this number in a few moments. For now I am interested in the source code of the map. So I look at the HTML code of this page, right here, and then we can see, a bit lower, it is located on map.php. Let's go there. Voila, a big version of the map. You can use this to find flurfs in your area if you want to. But that's not the point of this video. Instead, let's see if we can get the data of each dot. For that, we will again look at the HTML code, but this time for this page. And if we scroll down, we will find this variable locations with a lot of data in it. I don't even need to have an account to find an accurate reading of every user's location. This doesn't look good for privacy, but it doesn't end there. A little bit above, there's this URL. Let's have a look at that. This is the same raw data as on the website, just presented a little bit different. So. If you have the app installed or if you had the app installed and deleted it, your data is here on this page and this guy has it. This guy and how many others have access to your data. Mind you, the data as presented this way can be used freely by anyone on the internet to do funny stuff with, like automated tracking, find a person's traveling habits, and so on. I think the implications of this are clear. Anyway. Immediately we can see where the previous number of 37,073 came from. It's right here in this file. Firefox can also present the data a bit more orderly. 
and here you see the same number and the results as a separate drop down. Let's open that up and scroll all the way down. It seems the total number of active users is 11,975. That's not even close to the 37,073 mentioned on the map. What's up with that Dave? To double check this number, I also counted the rows in a different way with the same results. As you can see on screen right now. 11,977. So it's not a quirk of Firefox. And now for the bonus. If I go to the root of this last website, like this, I am met with a login screen. This probably means David has a control panel of some kind. The registration page is not visible, but very easily found again by looking at the source code. It's right here. And here we are. Let's try to make an account. For this purpose I will use a disposable email address, a random username and a random password. And that is where we are met with an error. It seems registration is not possible, but from the specific error message this seems to be an accident instead of a deliberate action. Here you can find the data that I typed in before. FE clock, an email address and a random password. However, if I scroll down, the incompetence of these people is very obvious. Here is the login data for the database. As a last test, I will try to make a connection to the database server without any username or password. Just to see if the server accepts connections from external sources. After about a minute or two, this times out, so at least there is an active firewall. Mind you, this is probably the default setting on Amazon, not an active security measure taken. I'm pretty sure that if you go into Amazon Web Services, you will be able to connect straight away. If anyone would be able to make that connection, he or she will have access to your email address, your encrypted password and your real-time location. This is a serious security issue, so all I can do is to advise you not to use this app in any way. Your privacy and data security is at risk. And that's it for today. So this data set contains 37,000 um, individual user records and uh, I think he said 11,000 active user records. That is the amount of uh, individual records this guy has in his possession at this particular moment in time. The wife sent the guy $75 or, or something, basically some hush money, and invited the guy to come on board and assist in, in the future and uh, monitoring for security issues. Uh, do not let this guy have access to your back end DITRH. 37,000 users has all their data um, lat long. So with the lat long, essentially, wherever you allow the app to get your latitude and longitude position, that is what is saved to that database. And that is the data that that guy has in his possession. So if that was in your living room, then guess what? The... Um, a lat long for your living room, which can be plotted on Google Maps. I'll pull that up, pull up the address, show a picture of your house, along with some other data. This guy, don't I don't know who this guy is, but he has your data. At a minimum, this guy has your data. And then we have the database issue, and that thing is not secured. And so one of the things that happened here is this guy came out and put out this video. It's got a ton of views on it. And... Um, so for a couple days, several people had a chance to see how to go and get access to this data. So, you know, who knows whoever um, that might be affiliated with this guy that has went and, and, and downloaded this data. So the, the only right thing to do is for David Weiss to come out and tell everybody that we have this security breach and your data uh, has been compromised. And it is up to you if you feel... Uh, secure enough or not to either keep the app installed or uninstall the app but what happens is what needs to happen is the app needs to be uninstalled that database needs to be deleted the proper security protocol needs to be um, put in place and then people can decide if they want to come back after the fixes were um, addressed 
and uh, reinstall the app or not. And I would advise David Weiss to take away that feature where you are getting a person's location. Um, do like we did, allow users to put in whatever zip code or city name they wish. So their actual lat long to their freaking home is not available on the internet. Um, and per their words, they have the the uh, top hacker from Epic Games on their team. The, that is their words. He's called the, the top hacker from Epic Games. And uh, when Zoom Truth severed ties with the oligarchs, Bob and his, his uh, cohorts, the very next day, the top hacker allegedly hacked uh, ZoomTruth.com the very next day. But in this case, wh where was the top hacker? Why did the top hacker not find this loophole? And he's not the top hacker at Epic Games. Trust me, he's not. That's essentially saying that Epic Games, their their employees. I would like to contact Epic Games and ask them how they feel about their their top hackers going out and hacking public uh, web apps and websites and see what they think about that. Anyway, why don't you get your top hacker to come over and um, do an audit on the security instead of having this guy do it? You don't know who this guy. Is. This guy is a globe earther. Hangs out with Wolfie6020. You need to figure out, the guy has the data set. Regardless of what happened, you paid him off, you know, whatever. The guy has a data set. That guy has access to that database, which is even worse. You need to figure that out. This is huge. And um, we we, uh, we we sent some super chats today to Jaren's live stream, and they got deleted. I'll put some screenshots up. So you guys are being really quiet on this, really quiet, deleting super chats, so on and so forth. Jaron beat us up this year about the security issue that we had in 2019, you know, two years ago. All of a sudden, he's not saying anything. He's super quiet now. So here's my prediction. These guys are going to um, focus their attention at me and attack me instead of addressing the issue at hand. That is going to be their response. Watch. <laughs> 